Journal and I'm editor of VN Times magazine. But I've snuck out of the office today and I'm here at the historic, iconic ZSL London Zoo in Regent's Park. I love hearing about what you do as RVNs, but I've come here today to see for myself what it takes to care for this menagerie of animals. Staff set off on their rounds, checking on the animals before the zoo opens to the public at 10am. First stop is the ring-tailed lemurs, but the team are looking for one in particular. At 26 years of age, Al is still maintaining his position of alpha male, but age is catching up with him and he has developed spondylosis of the spine. Al has been trained to eat breakfast alongside sweet potato containing medicine from a bowl and receives regular laser treatment, NSAIDs and joint supplements. Then it's off to see a species with quite different tastes. Yes, it's feeding time over at Penguin Beach. A whistle is used to tell them it's breakfast time. Not that they need much encouragement. So I'm just here in with the penguins, as you can see. And uh, the vets and nurses are, um, and the keepers are feeding them at the moment and they're just on a condition, body conditioning score. I just generally have a look and as you can sort of see, um, a lot of them are actually quite over conditioned. <laughs> Um, at the time of year, exactly. But this time of year, we do it mainly in the summer um, or spring to summer because they've got two types of stressors. Um, they've got breeding, so they're pairing up, fighting each over which pair to go with. Nest sites, they fight over that. And then obviously they have to um, lay their eggs and then exactly. rear them. So that's one stressor. Uh, and the other one is the molt, which um, is quite a... Uh, it takes a lot of physical um, strength out of them and that's why they have to get so uh, built up beforehand. So these two things can actually make some of the penguins lose a lot of condition and it can then set up for um, certain types of illnesses. Um, they can be prone to aspergillosis, um, particularly again at this time of year when it's warmer. Um, aspergillus lives in the environment that they can actually um, if they're stressed for any other reason or if they've got another illness, then um, asper uh, aspergillus can just uh, take over oh, oh, and okay. they become very sick with that. So we have to keep them, monitor them quite closely and the keepers do that mainly. Um, all I do now is go back and make a note on an Excel program just saying, stating um, I can do a general one like today because most of them are three plus. So we do it out five, one to five. Um, but sometimes if there are very slim ones or, or out of the boat season, some are very over conditioned, then I'll ask Susie their name, individual names, and then um, I'll write them down. But today it's just a, a general three plus. Then it's past the training pool to the nursery. So this little chick here is Rainbow, um, and her um, life began probably slightly abnormally. Um, so her parents accidentally squashed the egg in the nest um, and she got brought up to the veterinary department um, with the egg cracked. Um, so we actually helped her out with the egg, which we wouldn't normally do, but that was her only real chance of survival because her parents were likely to abandon the egg at that point. Um, so from then she's been hand reared, so she's been kept in here in our penguin creche um, and she's grown incredibly quickly, about 20% of her body weight today. Um, and we feed her a combination of a fish smoothie, which is um, penguin milkshake. Um, which is the fish blended with vitamins and minerals and you can see the diet up there um, and then as she gets older she'll start taking chunks of fish as well until we're on whole fish and then she'll eventually go back out and join the main colony. Sophie performs a health check on one of the young residents. Look at this then, nice and bright. You can see she's still got the real penguin downy fluff that she will eventually pull mm. out um, into her adult feathers before she goes back into the main pool with the rest of them. All this stuff coming off, where the new feathers are coming through under this, they're covered in like a sheet and it's just where it's breaking. It looks like it's um, just amazing. I love the medical side, I love the animals, everything about it. It's very interesting and you can learn every day. 
Um, I think every day is different when you're a veterinary nurse. You never really know what's going to walk through the door, even more so in a zoo environment. And I think you're always learning. You never know everything. Um, and there's always something that's going to catch you out or that you need to go away and learn about. Um, and as well as that, you can learn from your peers around you as well. And what is it that's so special about working at somewhere as iconic as um, I think we've got some great animals that we can work with. Um, I think as an organisation, ZSL does a lot of work um, outside of the kind of grounds here that not everybody knows about. So the conservation stuff and the field work that goes on in the wild is really um, pretty cool as well. Um, so any chance to be involved with any of that is incredible. The nurses are kept busy throughout the day visiting animals across the zoo and liaising with keepers to ensure the residents are happy and healthy. I uh, had a fantastic day here. A big, big thank you to all of the staff for having arranged my visit. Um, it is really eye-opening to have seen um, all the hard work that goes in to caring for all these animals uh, from across the team, especially the extremely uh, hard-working RVNs. I hope you've had as much fun watching the videos as I've had being with them, especially with the penguins. It was amazing.